السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, uh, Today our class is uh, about the Ethernet framing uh, إن شاء الله uh, this, this topic is not that uh, big it, uh, It's uh, uh, somehow easy to understand because the concept is very simple here uh, Also we have only 19 slides uh, objectives of this class actually is to uh, let you able to explain the application of reference models to networks. So uh, here we are going to uh, to see multiple models of the uh, uh, networks. Uh, then after that, you uh, you would be able to describe how frames are constructed. So we will learn the headers of the frames and how how we we are going to use them. Uh, also, you will be able to explain the function of MAC addressing at the data link layer and to describe it, uh, Ethernet frame forwarding and processing behavior. So in general, we are going to understand how the Ethernet frames are going to be used and how it works, how uh, the headering is uh, 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 structured and uh, what, what are the fields used in that headers. <coughs> Okay, uh, in this slide we can see the managing network communication. So uh, networks are primarily uh, managed by upper and lower layer protocols. As you can see, we have uh, upper, upper layers protocols like TCP IP uh, protocols and OSI protocols also the, the based on the OSI, I mean, or, and based the protocols based on the OSI or based on the TCP IP. Uh, and also we have the lower layer that's based on the uh, standards of uh, IEEE 802 or Ethernet or PPP or HDLC. So uh, let us see here the comments written be below the slide. Uh, here, the first point, communication over networks relies on uh, the application of rules that govern how data is transmitted and processed in a manner that is understood by both the sender and receiver. So the standard is only a clear, uh, a clearly defined language that can be understood by the sender and the receiver. This is the, the meaning of standard. Uh, as a result, multiple standards have been developed over the course of time with, with some standards becoming widely adopted. Uh, some of these standards are becoming uh, widely used while some of them uh, are already obsolete and nobody is using them at all. So uh, the, in, this, uh, in this course actually we focus only on the commonly used protocols. That's why in, in this class of today we are going to understand the Ethernet 2 and the 802.3 standards that's uh, commonly used. Uh, there uh, exists, however, a clear distinction between standards that manage physical data flow and the standards responsible for logical forwarding and delivery of traffic. Uh, the IEEE 802 standards represent a universal standard for managing the physical transmission of data across the physical network and comprises of standard including the Ethernet standard 802.3 which is uh, related to the Ethernet networks for physical transmission over local area network. Uh, alternative standards exist uh, for transmission of a wide uh, over wide area network uh, uh, networks operating over serial based medium media including Ethernet, PPP and HDLC. So uh, here we can see the clear differentiation of the protocols that's used uh, in the LANs and the other protocols that's used in the ones, in the one networks, wide area network networks in general. So for LANs, we uh, mostly use the IEEE 802.3 or any other standard depends on depends on uh, what. Uh, technology we, we implement. So for wireless we use 802.11, for, uh, for WiMAX we use 802.16, for Ethernet we use 802.3 and so on. Uh, 
So uh, mostly in the LAN, we use the IEEE 802 series of protocols. Uh, for once, we use Ethernet. Actually, Ethernet is uh, uh, a very, very common protocol that's used, uh, widely used, commonly used everywhere. And also, we have the BBB and HDLC that uh, both of them uh, are used for the serial communication. So BBB and HDLC are uh, designed for serial communication only. Uh, alternative standards exist for transmission over wide. Uh, this point I already mentioned. And also TCB IP has been widely adopted. So this, this model, actually the TCB IP is the widely uh, uh, implemented uh, uh, network stack instead of the OSI novel and uh, IBM. Uh, the, during the 90s and uh, the, the uh, to, uh, 2000s, uh, also there's, there was uh, this standard also was implemented. This one was implemented by IBM. The other one was uh, implemented by uh, novel. Uh, actually, IBM Novel are very big uh, operating system companies that was well known at that time. But uh, for now, I think nobody is still using them. And uh, I, I think they are obsolete, completely obsolete. So uh, uh, TCP IP has been widely adopted as a protocol as we defining the upper layer standards regulating the rules, protocols, regulating the, the standards actually uh, are regulating the protocols or the rules and the behavior involved in uh, managing the logical forwarding and uh, delivery between uh, stations. Uh, in this slide here we have, uh, we can see the uh, clear design of the TCB IP stack so we, uh, we have in this stack, we have uh, uh, five layers, but in this slide they show only four because uh, they exclude the physical layer here. Uh, because the physical layer and the data link layer are combined, uh, truly combined inside the, uh, uh, I mean the network ABIs. So they, they treat them as a one layer. But in the, uh, in the standard of the TCB IP stack, they have five layers. Application, transport, network, then after that data link, and uh, uh, at last is the physical interface. So here we have the TCB IEB reference model uh, primarily concerns with the core principles of protocol suite, which can be understood as the logical transmission and delivery of traffic between in stations. So TCB is responsible, TCB IB is responsible to deliver the data between the sender and the uh, receiver. Uh, as such, the TCB IB protocol reference model uh, provides a four layer presentation. As I mentioned here in this slide is four, but in the TCB IB standard, uh, uh, I mean uh, TCB IB stack model, uh, is uh, uh, it has five layers. You, if you uh, was asked to draw the TCB IB stack, you have to draw five layers, not four. Uh, here only to explain how it works in the real life. Uh, provides a four layer presentation of, of the network summarizing physical forwarding behavior under the network interface. So physical, and the data link are uh, combined together under the network interface. Since lower layer operations is not the concern of the TCB IB. You know, because these two layers are not uh, the, main, the main concern of the TCB IB. That's why they combine them together and they uh, 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 mention them as network interface. Uh, that's not the uh, target of the TCB IB. Primer, uh, primary focus remains on the network or inter, uh, internet layer, which is the third layer, uh, which deals with how traffic is logically forwarded between networks and the, trans, the transport sometimes referred to 
as host to host. Transport actually is related to the session, which is uh, involving the, the, the entire link between the source and the destination, which is called end-to-end -end or host-to-host -host link. Uh, because uh, maybe I, I have to explain something here. Uh, let me draw something on the screen to explain to you. So if, uh, I don't know where is it. I'm sharing it here. Okay, so uh, here, as I explained in, in this slide, the, uh, the uh, network layer actually is responsible to, uh, to uh, forward the data between networks and the uh, transport layer actually is responsible to deliver the data between the two in systems. So for example, if let's say we have a sender here, which is a BC, BC like this, and the receiver here, which is, uh, we call it destination. Then suppose that we have many routers here at the middle and these routers are belongs to different networks. So for example, if, if this uh, source wants to send data to this destination here, then we call this an end to end connection. So this one is end to end or host to host connection. Uh, this one is the responsibility of the transport layer. Uh, this one actually is a logical, logical link that's uh, really based on a physical link, maybe using this path or maybe using the other path here or maybe this path here or any other possible paths. So the paths actually, every part of the path, for example, this part here, is the responsibility of the Ethernet or the uh, 802 standard, I, IEEE 802, uh, or maybe the BBB or uh, HDLC. It depends on the, the type of the media. So if the type of the media used, used here is serial, then maybe we use BBB or uh, HDLC. But if we use the, uh, uh, for example, the uh, uh, UTB cables or the uh, Ethernet technology, then the Ethernet protocol is going to be used here. Uh, for example, if we use the wire, then the protocol will be 802.3. If we use wireless, then the protocol will be 802.11. Uh, also, uh, for, for, for here, the, the Ethernet protocol or the BBP protocol is responsible only for the connection of every two neighbors. So if let's say we have this path from here to here, from uh, source to destination, this path, then the Ethernet protocol is going to, to be responsible uh, for this link between these two nodes. Then after that, another protocol, another instance will be responsible for this. Another protocol will be, uh, another instance of the protocol will be responsible for this part, then another instance will be responsible for this part, and the last instance will be responsible for this part. So uh, the Ethernet or the uh, uh, layer, layer two or the data link layer protocol actually is responsible of the, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, hop by hop, connectivity. It's not responsible for the end-to-end -end systems or the end-to-end -end connectivity. <clears throat> okay. I hope it's clear. Uh, then the application layer represents an interface through through a, a variety of protocols that uh, enable services to be applied to end user application processes. So this one, the application layer actually at the inside, uh, maybe at the source or at the destination. So at these two ends, the, uh, the, 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 the application or the protocols will, will know or uh, will understand this 
packets or disk frames are coming or going to what application? Depends on the information that we have in the uh, application layer data. Uh, this, I think we already explained before. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time explaining this because I think it's very clear. We already have take, we have already taken this before and we have uh, taken enough time explaining it during the lab, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we have the OSI, OSI model. OSI model has uh, seven layers, as explained before. And this one actually is uh, uh, a theoretical model. The difference between the OSI and the, H, uh, the TCB IB is that the uh, uh, OSI have seven layers and the uh, TCB IB has only five. So if, if we see the difference in the H, uh, TCB IB, we have, we have, uh, sorry, I have to go back. Last slide. Um, okay. So uh, in the TCB IB, we have the application, we have the presentation and session are combined together as one layer called application layer. Then here we have the same thing, transport layer, we have network layer, we have data link and physical layer. Data link and physical layer, they are uh, uh, mentioned, uh, they mentioned to them as a, a, what they call it, a physical interface. So uh, why physical interface? Because the two parts or the two layers are very close to each other and the isolation is not possible. So we have to uh, consider them, you, you never find a, uh, how can I say that? Uh, we we uh, the isolation between these two layers is is very very hard. You cannot isolate them clearly as uh, as we do in the other uh, in the other layers. Uh, anyway, for the TCB IB, as I mentioned, only this are combined together. This three combined together to become only one layer. Then here uh, the layer number two. Uh, sorry, uh, this one lam layer number one, layer number two, layer number three, layer four, and this one is layer five. Okay, here we can see we can see the uh, we can see the functionality of every layer. Uh, so you can go through. I am not going to uh, repeat this. As I mentioned, we already explained this before. Uh, the, uh, I want to only to mention one point, which is very important. Uh, this point is the, uh, the, the difference between the OZ model and the TCB IB stack. What is the difference between them? The OZ, uh, from the name OZ model and TCB IB stack. Why, why they don't say TCB IB model? And why they say OZ, OZ model, they don't say OZ stack? Because the OZ is a model. It's a, it was at the stage before the implementation. That's why it was at the stage of the design. That's why they call it OSI model. But the TCB IB actually is the uh, model that has been drawn after the implementation to represent or to, uh, to uh, explain the real implementation of the layer networks. Uh, this is the main important uh, point. Uh, the main difference between the OSI and the TCB IB stack. Uh, encapsulation is already explained also, but uh, anyway, we are going to go through uh, very quickly. So when the data comes from the application, it's going to be chunked. Uh, it, it's going to be divided in small chunks uh, uh, called frames or packets or whatever. So every data chunk, the small chunk, is going to be sent to the uh, uh, lower layer at the sender side, because always any connection will start from the sender. Then after that, the receiver may reply. But at the beginning, the first packet will be sent from the sender side. So the direction will be from up to down. Uh, data is going to be uh, uh, traversed the uh, network layer from top to down. So data here, data chunk is going to be 
sent to the uh, lower layer. So maybe the presentation layer can add a header here, can add a small header. Let me use the bin. Uh, so uh, this is here a pure data, pure, pure data. Uh, then after we push this data down to the next layer, maybe this layer can attach small header here. Then when we push this header with, along with the data to the upper to the uh, lower layer, the lower layer will consider this complete uh, bucket, including the header and the data. It will be considered as data here and also maybe this this layer maybe attach can attach another header it, it depends on the needs if they need to attach they will attach if they don't need to do anything at this layer they will not do anything and after this after this uh, this complete packet is going to be considered as data as data here okay then after that this layer can attach another header this one is another header like this and this data and header together will be considered data here for the network layer and so on until the end so uh, only uh, in, at this layer we have Taylor and header so the header will represent the uh, beginning of the packet and the trailer will represent the end of the packet or the frame and then at this layer, the physical layer, we deal only with zero and one. Zero, one, and so on. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, here I have nothing to, to uh, explain more because as I mentioned, we already have taken this before. Uh, our today is the connection or the communication between two end stations, two end stations. Uh, so if, if we have two nodes like, uh, like what we have in this slide here connected together, then uh, the protocol used for, uh, for this kind of communication is the uh, IEEE 802.3, which is the Ethernet standard for local network. Uh, so here, as a part of the uh, IEEE 802.3 Ethernet standard, uh, data is encapsulated with uh, instructions in the form of a uh, header and a trailer uh, before it can be propagated over physical media on uh, which Ethernet is supported. Uh, each stage of encapsulation is referred to by the protocol, by a protocol data unit or BDU. So uh, here, this complete frame is called BDU, protocol data unit. Uh, protocol data unit, that means uh, it includes the data and the header together, which at the link, at the data link layer is known as a frame. So at the data link layer, they don't uh, say uh, packet, they say frame for the BDU. So this one is called frame. And the frame here for the data link layer includes the header and the trailer. And also at the middle, we will have the data that's uh, already uh, pushed down from the upper layer. <clears throat> Uh, also, this data can be uh, received from uh, another another uh, another node. Then uh, this data is going to be taken to the upper layer after we remove the header and the trailer. Uh, depends on what side uh, 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 you are talking about. So, uh, uh, Ethernet frames contain instructions that govern how. Uh, and whether data can be transmitted over the medium, medium between two or more points. So it, uh, here, the, the Ethernet frame or the header will include some instructions to, uh, to tell uh, the, uh, the network devices how this packet or how this frame is going to be transmitted. Uh, 
over this media. So it, uh, it will determine whether it's uh, for two, for one destination, for more than one destination, for multiple destinations or uh, whatever. Uh, later we are going to explain this. Uh, Ethernet frames come in two general formats. So in general, Ethernet frames can, can be in two different formats and we are going to uh, see the, the two formats in the next slide. So the selection of which is highly dependent, dependent on the protocol that have been defined prior to uh, framing encapsulation. So it depends on what protocol or what application of network we are using. So if LAN, then we may use something, or if one, we may use different protocol. Uh, and also if LAN, it depends on what protocol also for the LAN we are using. So uh, later we are uh, going to explain everything in, in more detail. Uh, here, for the frame formats, as, as we mentioned in the previous slide, we said we have two formats in general. Two main formats for the uh, uh, layer two, uh, or the, uh, what they call it, the detailing layer uh, frames. So the format actually is uh, only about the header not about the data because the data is either coming from the upper layer or maybe coming from the uh, lower layer so this is not going the data is not going to be touched the only thing that can be formatted or uh, touched or configured by the layer is the header and the tailor so the tailor in both formats are the same if cs is the same so if cs here is uh, what they call it uh, 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 frame check sequence. So the FCS is a frame check sequence. Uh, it's something similar to the checksum. Uh, this field is used to check the integrity of the data. So if the, the packet is corrupted maybe uh, because of uh, fading or signal fading or maybe because of corruption, um, because of collusion uh, of two packets or something like this, uh, data can be corrupted so the FCS can can uh, uh, detect that. Depends on the FCS, we can detect either the packet is uh, correct or corrupted. Uh, but using this FCS, we cannot fix the corrupted packets. We, we discard the corrupted packets only. Then the other side can uh, retransmit or depends on the protocol that's used. We, we, we don't care about it here. It's out of the scope of this course. Uh, okay, let us go through uh, these things. So the first format or the first standard is the Ethernet 2 and the second format is the IEEE 802.3. Okay, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ethernet 2 is uh, Ethernet 2 Ethernet 2 is uh, 802.6 is it 0.6 or uh, if I'm not mistaken is 0.6 oh no 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 not 0.6 uh, okay okay just forget about it they call it uh, Ethernet 2 and this one is IEEE 802.3 uh, so here uh, two two frame formats are recognized as a standard for Ethernet based network so this two are used for the Ethernet based networks only. Uh, so if we use uh, uh, different different networks, so like uh, frame relay or uh, other types of networks, then the, these two protocols are not going to be used. Uh, the DIX version 2, actually DIX version 2 is the Ethernet 2. This is the one that I was looking for in the Google. Yeah, they, uh, at the beginning they, they, was co uh, they, they call it DIX version 2, but uh, now it's well known as a Ethernet 2 frame type. So uh, the DIX version 2 frame type standard was originally developed during the early 1980s, where today it's recognized as the Ethernet 2 frame type. Ethernet 2 was eventually accepted and integrated into the uh, Ethernet 802 standards. 
So it's uh, one of the standard of uh, 802, also the Ethernet tool. Uh, highlighted as a part of section 3.2.6. So if you go and download this standard, you, uh, sorry, this standard, IEEE 802.3x, you will find at the section 3.2.6, you will find the explanation of the Ethernet 2. So also Ethernet 2 is under this, this standard. Okay, but the format, we have two formats. We have the format of I, uh, Ethernet 2 and also the format of the Ethernet 802.3. Uh, this one actually is uh, uh, comes came first. This this format, the second one came first. Then uh, I think they came up with the Ethernet two at last. Uh, here the Ethernet, uh, the IEEE eight zero two point three Ethernet standard was originally developed in uh, nineteen eighty three, as you can see here. The one was in the early eighteenth here which is ah oh, no it's the same 1983 <laughs> and it was attached to the standard at the uh, year of 1997 uh, with with key differences between the frame format including a change to the type field so the two dif the, the, the main difference between these two uh, formats is the type field and the other fields here, the SNAP, LLC, and then for the uh, destination MAC address, source MAC address are the same, FCS is the same. The only difference is this type and these three fields. Uh, the type field that is designed to identify the protocol to which the data should be forwarded to once the frame instructions has been processed. So when the when the packet is received somewhere, then after they uh, process the header of the packet or uh, of the frame, based on the data or the value of the type, the, uh, the, the network device will understand this frame is targeted for what protocol. Later we are going to see more details about this. Uh, so in the IEEE 802.3 Ethernet format, uh, this is represented as a length field which re relies on the extended set of instructions referred to as 802.2 LLC to identify the forwarding protocol. So here they use the length and the LLC and also the SNAB fields to determine what protocol is going to be used for this uh, certain frame. Uh, Ethernet 2 and IEEE 802.3 associate with upper layer protocols that are distinguished by a time value range where uh, protocol supporting a value less than or equal to 1500 or uh, 0, 05 DC hexadecimal will employ the IEEE 802.3. So depends on the value of the type. So if the value is uh, less than or equal 1500, so the standard is going to be uh, IEEE 802.3. But if the, the value is greater than or equal 1536, it would be, uh, it will use the uh, Ethernet 2 protocol or standard. <clears throat> so protocols are presented by a type value greater than or equal 1536 or 0600 in hexa will employ the Ethernet 2 and which represents the majority of all frames within the Ethernet based networks. Later we will see what kind of uh, values we can use for these types. Uh, other fields found within the frame include the destination and source MAC addresses uh, to identify the sender and the intended recipients. The recipients can be one, can be more than one, and can be all. 
So it depends on what kind of uh, uh, communication. Is it unicast, multicast, or uh, broadcast? So uh, as well as the frame check sequence, frame check sequence, this one, it's the FCS, FCS. So maybe we write it here, FCS, because I always uh, forget it. Uh, that's used to confirm the integrity of the frame during transmission. So uh, here we understood what kind of formats we have. So in, 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 at the main, we have two formats. One is the IEEE 2 and the other one is the, I, uh, sorry, Ethernet 2 and the uh, second one is IEEE 802.3. Uh, here we, am, we are going to take the first one, Ethernet 2, will be explained here. And the other one, IEEE 802.3 frame, is going to explain in the next to be explained in the next slide. Uh, okay, here for the Ethernet 2, we have the time field here. It's uh, only two bytes, uh, and the uh, for the destination MAC address and the source MAC address, uh, each of them is six bytes. So it's the same even in the other frame uh, format of the IEEE 802.3. Uh, three and the uh, FCS is four bytes also in in both formats and the data here can vary from uh, 46 to 1500 1, bytes it depends on the application need so for this time field which is a uh, length of two bytes if the value is equal to 2048 or 0, 0800 in hexa, this means the used protocol is an IB, IB protocol. But if the value is 2054 or 0, 0806 in hexa, that means the used protocol is the ARB, which is the address resolution protocol used for uh, uh, switching networks. So in uh, the Ethernet 2 frame, Type is associated with protocols with a type value greater than 1536, as we explained here. Greater than or equal 1536 means Ethernet 2. So here you can see, we can confirm the, the values must be equal to or greater than the 1536. So this one is greater, this one is greater. Okay. Uh, The Ethernet 2 frame references, uh, references a hexadecimal type value which identifies the upper layer protocol. One common example of this uh, is the IEP. Uh, IEP uses this value in hexadecimal 0800. Uh, since this value for IEP represents a value greater than this value of the format, uh, it's determined that the uh, Ethernet 2 frame type should be applied during encapsulation. This is only to explain or to tell the other side of the communication what kind of encapsulation they have to use. They, they have to consider this frame as an Ethernet 2 or as IEEE 802.3. So if, if they cannot differentiate, then the retrieved data will be uh, totally wrong. So another common uh, another common protocol that re relies on uh, the Ethernet 2 frame type is the ARB, which is, as I mentioned, uh, uh, called address resolution protocol used for switching networks, represented by the hexadecimal value 0806. And uh, as I mentioned, the uh, frame check sequence is used to confirm the integrity of the frame. That's all about the Ethernet 2. Let us go to the uh, next format, which is the IEEE 802.3. Uh, here we have lint field, which is two bytes. And also we have the LLC that has three, uh, three subfields. The first field is uh, DSAP and the other field is the uh, SSAB 
the D here, here means destination and the S here means the source. And the SAB here has, uh, uh, SAB is, uh, uh, I have totally forgot this. D dot SAB is here in the in, in our field. We have uh, we have a lot of acronyms. Then you are going to be uh, always forgetting them. Uh, anyway, it's it's not in the in the scope of our course because we we are not going to take anything related to this thing. But I want to uh, explain to you what is this. If we could find. Let's see. Multiplex, and I think this one is the standard. Control F, SAP. So, surface access point. Surface access point. This one. Let us write it here. SAP. So it means surface, surface, axis. Is it? Surface axis point. Yeah. Uh, okay. So here the LLC includes the destination surface axis point and the source surface axis point and also includes uh, another field called control. Uh, even here we are not explain why we use this and how we uh, we we can use this because this one is uh, a standard that's uh, uh, still used in some uh, old technology uh, with uh, with old protocols like S uh, STB. Yeah, uh, commonly nowadays we are using the Ethernet two format. So. Uh, for the SNAB, SNAB actually is uh, what they call it uh, sub network access protocol. Sub network access protocol. So, here in, inside the SNAB, we have two fields. The main field that we want to focus here is the type, type field. So, uh, the other field is the uh, ORG or original, original code or originated code. Uh, this one is three bytes and this one is two bytes. The type actually is the main field that we need to understand now in this class. Uh, so if the type also is similar to this here, when we want to use IB, we have to set this value. When we want to use ARB, we can use this value. But here also, if we want to use STB, we have to use the value uh, 0x03 or uh, three in decimal. Okay, so the IEEE 802.3 frame type is associated with protocols with a type value less than 1500. So you can see here the value is three, which is less than 1500. So uh, uh, as you can see here, some of the protocols that have existed for many years but that are still applied in support of Ethernet networks are likely to apply the IEEE 802.3 frame type. So the IEEE 802.3 is still used with the old protocols. So that's why we are not going to pay a lot of attention about these fields and how they are going to be used. Uh, on one clear example of this is the STB. So STB can use this format and uh, it should use the type, should set the type to the value of three. Okay, now we finish the formats, two, two main formats. Then let us go and see uh, the frame forwarding, how the frame forwarding is going to be done. So frame forwarding actually is, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, from hook to another. It's not responsible for the connection between, uh, between the two end systems. It's responsible for forwarding, frame forwarding from node to another. So Ethernet based networks achieve communication between 
two end stations. Uh, so here they, they, they say end stations. Why they say end stations? Because uh, as I mentioned, the frame forwarding is either from node, sorry, I have to uh, enable the bin first, either uh, to be between node to another node, which is connected directly, or maybe between node to another node that's connected through switches, like this. So in this case, the, uh, the, the, the Ethernet will be responsible for the connectivity from here to here, okay? Uh, anyway, this is uh, not a big deal, but uh, we, have to, uh, we have to mention it because we need you to understand how, how the Ethernet is working. So, uh, Ethernet based networks achieve communication between two end stations on a local area network. So, it's all about local area network using media access control. So, everything is based on the MAC access, uh, sorry, media access control. Uh, addressing that allows end systems within a multi access network to be distinguished. So the MAC address is a physical address that's spawned into the uh, network interface card to which the physical medium is connected. Uh, this means the uh, physical address is already generated and printed and also embedded into the chip of the network interface card from the factory, from the manufacturer. So we cannot play with that. The physical MAC address uh, or the MAC address would, would be always fixed for any hardware. We cannot change it. So uh, maybe some of you know how to change the MAC address in the operating system in the window, for example, or in the Linux. So uh, I will tell you that this is not going to be changed in the physical device, but it's going to be changed at the registry level only of the operating system. So uh, the same MAC address is retrieved and used as the destination MAC address of the intended receiver by the sender before the frame is transferred, transferred to the physical layer for forwarding over the connected medium. So here, if, if the frame is going to be sent from host A, in this slide to host B, so the destination MAC address will be the MAC address of the host B, as you can see here. Is it destination MAC address? So it's uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, this is wrong. So this is supposed to be C A nine ninety C nine and B8, they, they wrote it wrongly. So this one is C and B8. As I mentioned, this is the slides of uh, Huawei. We, we didn't change anything. We just fix any, any uh, mistakes we find, we, we fix directly. So here, let us confirm 10, 0, B, A9, 9, D, C9, B8. So why the destination MAC address is this one? Is the host B MAC address? Because the bucket is meant to be received at the host B. Am I right? So the destination host or the destination MAC address is supposed to be the MAC address of the destination. And the source MAC address is supposed to be the MAC address of the host A, which is the one that generates this frame. So Media access control or MAC addressing facilitates data link layer communication. So with, with this, uh, every node uh, should know how to send data to any uh, mint destination and also any destination should know how to receive or how to collect the data meant to be received at that destination. <coughs> Uh, 
the MAC address is a physical address that spawned as a, uh, I, I already read this. Uh, this same MAC address is retrieved and used at the, as the destination MAC address of the intended receive, receiver by the sender. So if let's say this packet is sent from here, from host A to host B, when the host B receive, it will check the destination MAC address. If the destination MAC address in the frame is equal to the destination MAC address of the host V, then the packet will be received and processed. But if the destination MAC address in the, in the frame is different, that, different than the MAC address of the receiver, then the packet is going to be discarded. Unless this MAC address of the host B is a part of a uh, multicast or a broadcast uh, network. So later we are going to take the uni unicast, multicast, and the broadcast. So the first thing we do when we receive a frame at the layer two, we check the uh, uh, destination MAC address in the frame, compare it to the receiver uh, MAC address. If they are uh, included, uh, uh, if they are equal, then the packet will be received and processed. If uh, the MAC address is meant to be received by this host as a multicast or broadcast, then also is going to be proceed and uh, received and proceed. Otherwise, the packet will be discarded because the destination is wrong. Okay, let us go now and see how the MAC address is uh, structured. So the MAC address length is uh, 48 bits. Uh, it's represented in hexadecimal, so it has 24 bits, uh, the first 24 bits and the second 24 bits. The first 20 sec uh, 24 bits is used for something called OUI, which is the Organization uh, Unique Identifier. Organization Unique Identifier. And also the other part is uh, assigned by each organization. So the organization uh, unique identifier is given uh, from the authority, from the central authority that's responsible to give unique identifiers for every manufacturer. So for example, for example, only to simplify, uh, if, if we are the uh, central uh, authority that's responsible to assign this OUI, for example, we say that, uh, okay, for Cisco, we are going to use the OUI 100 for example. And for Huawei, we can use uh, 101. So when we buy, when we buy a network card, uh, in, in network interface card from the market, then we, we see the OUI of the, the first 24 bits of the MAC address are equal to 100. So directly we know that the manufacturer of this card is Cisco. If 101 means Huawei, for example, okay? So this is only to differentiate between the manufacturers. Then after that, the, the, the other or the second 24 bits is given, the, uh, the freedom is given to the organization to use them. So uh, they normally use a sequence to be assigned. Uh, so the first card, the, the, the manufacturer definitely will take the first number. So it will be number one. The second card will be number two, three, four, until, until the uh, 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 cover their uh, uh, protected uh, network interface cards. So here the each MAC address is a 48-bit value commonly represented in a hexadecimal 16, base 16 format and uh, comprised of two parts that attempt to ensure the uh, that every MAC address is globally unique. So every MAC address physically assigned to a network interface card is globally unique. Uh, this is achieved by the def defining of organizationally unique identifier. That's uh, vendor specific. So the OUI is vendor specific based on which it's uh, possible to trace the origin of the product back to its vendor based on the first 24. As I mentioned in our example, I said if the, if the first 24 bits is equal to 100, that means Cisco, for example. In our example only. It's only to, uh, to uh, let you understand how it works. 
So the remaining 24 bits of the uh, MAC address, the second one, uh, is a value that's incrementally and uniquely assigned to each product. Example, network interface card or similar product supporting board interfaces for which a MAC is required. So uh, in, in every network interface card that requires MAC address, then the number will be assigned by the manufacturer. <coughs> uh, uh, okay, here we come to the uh, unicast frame forwarding. Uh, there is a lot of uh, comments here, a lot of notes written uh, below the slide. Uh, I will keep this for you, but because this thing is very simple, that's why I want to simplify for you. Uh, okay, for the unicast frame forwarding, uh, unicast means the receiver is only one. Multicast means the receiver is more than one. It can be two, three hundred, whatever. It's more than one receiver. But the broadcast, broadcast means everyone should receive. Means the receivers are all network devices. Okay, so we have unicast means one receiver, Multicast means more than one receiver. Broadcast means all devices must receive. Okay, so for at the receiver side, when we receive a unicast, how we can differentiate? Is it unicast or multicast or broadcast? So based on the destination MAC address that's already in, saved in the frame, when we receive, receive a frame, we extract the destination uh, MAC address. If the destination MAC address has a zero at the eight bit, the bit number eight from the left side, if the bit number eight from the left side is equal to zero, that means this is a unicast packet, unicast frame. So in this case, we have to confirm that the destination MAC address uh, coming on the frame must be equal to the receiver MAC address. Otherwise, the packet will be deleted, will be discarded. So here, if, if suppose, suppose that the host A uh, sends a unicast frame to host B, uh, because in this kind of networks, the switch, switching networks, the uh, packets sometimes can, can be received can be received by, uh, by other BCs, by all BCs, for example. So here, especially if we use hub, if we use hub or if we use wireless, uh, then everybody connected to the network will receive all packets, even including the unicast frames. So in this case, this packet will include the MAC address of host B at the destination. So uh, let me explain this using, uh, uh, I will draw something here to explain to you. So here, here is the packet. So as I, I mentioned, we have source MAC and we have the destination, destination MAC, am I right? Destination MAC here is host P, for example. Suppose that this, this frame is injected to the network by the host A. So host C could receive the packet. So when the host C received the packet, it will compare, will check this destination MAC address. Is it equal to the host C MAC address? No, so it will be discarded. Okay, host B will receive, then it will check. If the destination MAC address of the frame is equal to host B, yes, it's equal, then it will be received and processed. And host D will receive also the, the frame, then it will check the destination MAC address. Is it equal to the destination MAC address of host D? No, then the packet will be discarded. And uh, here we are. So we can do this only when the bit number eight is equal to zero. So if the bit number eight is equal to zero at the destination MAC address of any frame, that means the packet is a unicast frame. Okay, if 
Okay, the second type of uh, frame forwarding is the uh, when when we use the broadcast broadcast frame forwarding. So uh, if let's say host A wants to send something to all, so then the destination MAC address here at the bucket destination uh, source MAC and the destination MAC. Destination MAC, if we, if we make it destination MAC address of host B, then host B only will receive. So how we are going to send to C and D? In this case, instead of this, we use the uh, uh, MAC address of all ones, all ones in decimal, and all ifs in hexadecimal. So if, if the MAC address is all if, as you can see here, that means the uh, frame is meant to be received by anyone connected to this network, which is a broadcast frame. Okay. Uh, okay. The last type of the frame forwarding is the multicast. The multicast is similar to this unicast, but here the bit number eight is uh, going to be equal to one. Going to be equal to one. So in this case, for multicast, for multicast, here as you can see, this is the sender, host A is the sender, and host B and D are uh, part of the multicast network. So for, for B and D, in order for, for them to be uh, part of the multicast network, they have to be configured. They have to be manually configured. So for example, we, we tell them that uh, we go to host B, we configure host B to receive any data coming from a certain multicast, uh, uh, what they call it, MAC address. Okay, so uh, we tell the host B what is the multicast uh, MAC address and also we tell the host D what is the multicast uh, uh, MAC address. So. Uh, when the bucket is received here, they will check, they will find the number of the, the value at the bit number eight equal to one. Then in the, at that point, at that time, they will know that this one is multicast. They have to go and they check their multicast list of networks. If this MAC address is included in their uh, multicast list, then will uh, the, the host B will receive the bucket and will process it. But if, if the bucket is received here at the host C, then the host C check, it finds the bit number eight is equal to one, and it checks what is the multicast uh, network list here in the host C, they cannot find the same MAC address, then the bucket is going to be discarded, and it's not going to be processed. Okay. Uh, okay, the last thing here, I think it's supposed to be the, yeah, second last. Uh, something called uh, carrier sense. The carrier sense is actually very simple uh, protocol that's only used when we have a shared media. Shared media like uh, similar to the, uh, what they call it, the network hub or any media that works based on the physical. Uh, uh, also the wireless networks, wireless networks because it's, uh, it uh, depends in uh, based, works based on the uh, wireless or the, the radio frequency. So everything is uh, uh, based on the uh, first layer. So here the media is shared. When a packet is sent on wireless network, everybody connected to the same wireless network will receive. Uh, so if, if two devices are sending data at the same time on the same wireless network or on the same shared media network, then the collusion will happen and the data is not going to be received. Okay? That's why uh, when, we, when we have a shared uh, collusion domain or uh, using the uh, uh, shared media, network media, then here we have to use the carrier sense. So every 
network device, before it sends data to the media, it has to sense, it has to check whether if there is any somebody transmitting data or not. So if somebody is transmitting, then we have to wait until the other one finished. Then after that, we push the data to the network. But if there is nobody sending, then we can set. So this, that's all about the carrier sense. I, I tried my, my best to simplify it for you. So here, if in this example here, at the top line here, uh, let me see in the first in the first row here we have a b c c here sends data to b and here we have the uh, dashed line here dashed line is uh, the sense of the carrier so host a will will sense the host uh, sorry will sense the carrier will sense the media if there is somebody sending data or not so it will will find that c is sending data to b then the host A will wait until uh, C finished, then after that it can transmit data. Okay, as you can see in the second row. So after the C finish transmitting data to B, then A started transmitting data to C, either to C or to B or whatever, or even to, to another one, uh, even to D or uh, E or whatever. So uh, from here, we can... Uh, exclude, uh, sorry, we can conclude that uh, uh, when we use shared uh, network media, then more than one device sending data at the same time will create a collusion. To avoid this, we have to use carrier sense protocol to check whether if, if there is anybody sending, then we have to delay our transmission until the others finish, then after that we send. So only one sender at a time is allowed. Okay? So, a traffic is uh, prepared to be forwarded over the physical network. It's necessary for hosts in shared collusion domains to determine whether uh, any traffic is uh, currently occupying the transmission medium. So transmission medium such as uh, in the case of 10 days 2 uh, provides a shared medium uh, over which CSMA CD must be applied to ensure collusions are handled should they occur. So this protocol is a uh, carrier sense protocol. It's used with this standard to uh, uh, what they call it to uh, ensure collusion are handled. So this, this protocol is going to handle the collusion. So if there is any collusion happen, uh, uh, it, it will be avoided because this one is collusion detection and avoidance, this, this protocol. There's, uh, there's collusion detection only uh, because you see here, this one CD is collusion detection. So uh, uh, there is collusion avoidance and also collusion detection. And uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, collusion recovery also is available. Depends on the, uh, the uh, standard that we use and the media and the technology as well. Uh, all, all of this are very common when we talk about the uh, networks based on radio, based on wireless, uh, like mobile networks, like wireless networks, WiMAX, and so on. All of them, they have to use this kind of uh, carrier sense protocols. But for the uh, uh, Ethernet, the modern Ethernet, because the modern Ethernet is uh, using the full duplex communica communications, so the sender and receiver are uh, using different wires, then no need to use the, uh, this kind of carrier sense. Uh, okay. If the transmission of a frame is de detected on the link, the host will delay the forwarding of its own frames until such time as the line becomes available, uh, following which the host will begin to
two forward frames from the physical interface towards the intended destination. Uh, okay, where uh, two hosts are connected over media medium capable of supporting full duplex transmission, as in in the case of media such as 10 base D, uh, like uh, coaxial cable, CAT5, CAT6, and so on, uh, they, they support full duplex. So it's considered not possible for transmitted frames to suffer collusion. Collusion is not going to happen. Why? Because uh, the rec receiver channel, the reception, the transmission and reception uh, 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 of frames occur over separate wires. So the, the reception uh, is over a wire and the trans transmission is using different wire. Uh, and therefore, there is no requirement for CSMA CD to be implemented. Okay, uh, that's all about the carrier sense. Here we have uh, what they call it frame processing. So frame processing is actually uh, the, the the operation that happens at the uh, receiver of the frame. So when when the frame when a frame is sent, for example, from A to B and B receives uh, the frame, then the MAC address, the destination MAC address is uh, compared to the host A MAC address. So uh, if host B found the uh, MAC address is meant to be received here, then the MAC address or the header will be removed and the tra tra trailer will be also removed, then the data is going to be processed. So that's all about the processing. You can read all of this uh, information for your uh, uh, benefit. So uh, this one, as I mentioned, FCS is used to uh, ensure the integrity of the bucket or the frame. That's all about it. So here the summary. Uh, we have two questions. How does Ethernet determine the protocol to which uh, a processed frame should be delivered? So this one is based on the field of the time here. Uh, it depends on uh, what kind of protocol. If we found the value of 0800, then the protocol is IB. If the value is 806, the protocol is ARB. And also, if the, the, the frame is uh, IEEE 803, uh, 802.3, then the type is uh, equal to 3. That means the protocol is uh, uh, STB. STB protocol, as, as we mentioned here. So STB will use that three, value of three. <laughs> How it's determined whether a frame should be processed or discarded upon being received by uh, an end device. So it's all about the destination MAC address contained within the frame uh, header uh, is analyzed by the receiving end station and compared to the MAC address associated with the interface uh, on, on which the frame was received. So if the destination MAC address and uh, interface MAC address uh, don't match, the frame is discarded, as I mentioned. But sometimes they don't match, but the, the frame is going to be processed because the, this, this uh, destination MAC address is a part of the, uh, uh, for example, uh, multicast network, or maybe uh, they don't match because the uh, destination MAC address of the, back of the frame is uh, a broadcast uh, MAC address, which is all if, then the packet is going to be received and uh, processed. So that's all about uh, today today class. Uh, so uh, it, it was all about uh, Ethernet framing. I hope everything is uh, uh, it was able to understand. So if, if there is anything uh, misunderstood or maybe it's not clear enough to, to be understood, please let me know in our WhatsApp group. Uh, send me uh, any question or maybe using the uh, email. Uh, and I will do my best to answer you as soon as I can, inshallah. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, inshallah, I will see you uh, in the next class, inshallah. So, assalamu alaikum.